the reason I chose to visit uh, the Oasis archives in Florence was that because I'm very interested in how European studies develop as a field in sort of in parallel with the project of uh, European integration. 2017 is where we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Oasis, so this was like a great opportunity to have a first look at the Oasis archives. The Oasis has played such a, an important role in shaping the field of European studies in the UK in particular, but also in other countries in Europe, I'd say in general, with its conferences, with its activities. So it was great to have this chance to have a look actually at their archives, um, understand a little bit the reasons of why the organization was founded in the first place, what was sort of the, the constitution or the core mission, and then what sort of range of activities developed over the years um, as, as UAC sort of grew into the big uh, association it is today. I think in addition, what is really nice about um, the archives in Florence is that apart from the UAC's archives, there's a whole other range of documents um, related to people who are important for um, the development of European studies or for the history of European integration. So you can start having a browse around into other documents as well and start connecting some dots actually with, with, with the UAC's archives. There's a lot of societal phenomena which are also being reflected in the materials, things about prof professionalization, about um, the development of associations in tandem um, with an institution, which I think don't just tell an interesting story about the UACs as an association, but also tell a very interesting story about how the European Union developed, how there's a whole range of institutions, associations around the European Union, which also influence its work. And I think that's a very nice way in in, in addressing maybe um, the history of European integration from a new angle by looking at the role of experts, by looking at the role of academic exchanges and how they may have shaped also some of the ideas, some of the thinking about, uh, about Europe, about the European Union and about European integration. It's definitely a very interesting crossroads where we are at this time. There's a 50th anniversary of UACs there's a whole discussion about Brexit and then there's also the additional discussion of where is European studies going, where is the European project actually going in a time where we perceive maybe multiple crises such as migration, um, financial and economic, uh, banking union, etc. What is significant maybe about UACs is that it was set up in 1967 before actually the UK joined the European community. So in many ways I'm fairly optimistic about um, UACs and about the future of European studies in the UK after a possible Brexit. The first presentation of these materials is going to be in October, 12th and 13th of October in Florence at the EUY where we're organizing a um, a two-day conference um, dedicated to Europe in the archives, Europe in the future. I hope that the, the conference in, in Florence will, will allow us the opportunity to address some of these questions, to understand exactly uh, what is happening with European studies in the last couple of years and how it might evolve and whether there's going to be any impact of, of Brexit. I think one of the major points we've definitely seen in recent years is people have started considering more um, the idea of disintegration or the idea of differentiated integration and looking um, at it at, at sort of European integration not from one particular perspective but try to understand sort of reflect a lot more on the competition between ideas, uh, dissidence maybe as well and I think differentiation is, is very much a key word there.